Hey, would you look at that? A little bit of loss of traction there. Not exactly what we like to see. Oh, and it's gone. So... I just did a very relaxed, chill stream where we just had a bit of a chat. And one of the things that came up was they wanted to see me create, a, well, maybe they just wanted to see actually one, a race five cylinder. Now there was the Volvo 850 that Peter Brock drove, but I think I could do something as well. And another person also said at the same similar sort of time that they wanted to see me specifically this time to make a homologation race series car. And I thought, why not do both? I think it's Porque No Los Dos. So we're probably going to choose, uh, I don't know, do they want to go like full hardcore race car? Maybe that is what we'll do. We'll go like a full kind of decked out race car. Maybe not a full decked out race car. Let's check out what the new bodies are because I haven't done a whole lot of looking around. There is a lot here. I could do one of these bodies. I do love this body a lot. I think this is a new body but I don't think I want to do that for this. Though I think I will use that body at some point. I think this is a new van. Looks kind of cool. What is this car? Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to do a video with this car body. But for now, we're just going to go with the one I selected, which is this nice kind of American AMG type looking GTA car. And we're going to go fiberglass and monocoque. So it's gonna be basically a regular chassis, but lightened up a lot. So the chassis will be made out of steel. It's going to be a front longitudinal. I can go mid engine with this. I don't think that'll work really. Then we're gonna go double wishbone and we're gonna sneak in some push rod in the rear. So a new project and it's gonna be an inline five cylinder. So we're not going to go front wheel drive. You can just bugger the F off. And we are going to push this thing to its limits. We're going to first see what we could do naturally aspirated and then decide whether we want to go with a turbo instead. So aluminium, maximum size, dual overhead cam, five valves per cylinder, because we're not going to go variable valve lift. Uh, we're going to go cast for now and we'll see what'll happen. This is a five liter, five cylinder. So each one of these cylinders is a liter. Goodness gracious. We're going to go huge compression. Cam profile is going to be very high. Going to go variable valve timing and we're going to increase the quality of the cylinder head so we can get like really high RPM out of this thing. No turbocharger. Injection. This is going to be, yes, a direct injection. We're going to have a nice per cylinder intake manifold and it's going to be race and we're going to go a super but not a hundred Ron. So this is the homologation so a street version, but just like super hardcore, limited number, all that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. So a little bit of extra fuel mixture here, some extra ignition timing, increase this RPM limit quite a lot. And then what do we want here? It is homologation. So we're probably gonna go long tubular, not race. And oh, it's a collector four into one. Oh, I never noticed that before. And so is race. And it just looks really weird how it goes four into one and then into like a, some dinky pipe. We're just gonna go with, oh, that goes four two into one. Oh, interesting. I think they've changed how the exhausts are. And I think I like it a lot more, except for the fact that the models aren't quite done right. It, it, it looks better to have it this way, but yeah, that doesn't uh, look good. So long tubular it is. Yeah, as you can see right there, that is not, that's not right at all. I'm gonna put this up to say like a 3.5 for now. It's going to have a high flow three-way catalytic converter, but no mufflers. Okay, these pistons are not dealing with the issue at all. And I'm not even sure what RPM this thing wants to go. So lightweight titanium and lightweight forged and then billet steel for the crank. It doesn't like it. It doesn't want to be the stroke that it is, unfortunately. That's that's a bummer. What if we up the quality? That hasn't changed anything at all whatsoever. Okay, we're going with a 3.8 liter five cylinder, which is unfortunate. I would like a little bit more than that, but there's not a whole lot really that I am able to do here. Okay, we have 404 kilowatts, which is actually a pretty decent number. That's 541 horsepower. That is pretty decent. So we're gonna go with that. This is a valve valve. Great. You know what? I think we're going to make the valve cover my racing yellow that I really like. Oh, that just, it looks so good. I love it. Oh, it's fantastic. Let's give this five cylinder a bit of a listen. 
Oh, that's... That's not a sound that you hear very often. That's really cool. Now, where does it reach 100 kilowatts? At about 3,000 RPM. So you do have to keep this one fairly up in the rev range to be able to get any sort of decent power. But then, it just goes. That's good. I like it, and I like it a lot. So, on to the car body. Do we go with a regular old two-door, or do we chop the top off of this car and go with a convert? I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to chop the top off, and it's going to be a convertible. Now, if you're wondering why I always remove flake immediately, it's because when you go over to BMNG, it gets rid of the flake anyway. So you may as well just work on the car without the flake so you know actually what color you're getting. You can make the body transparent. Oh my goodness. That is, I can, I don't have to delete the roof anymore. I can just tell it to go away. Oh my God. So here we go. Convertible roof is going to be a new paint and it's going to be transparent. Yes. Oh my God. It's amazing. Wow. That well done developers. That is, oh, I just, oh God. That's, that's what I wanted to see from the beginning. And it gives it a color named Tepui. Okay. Sure, why not? So we're going to start with a rear wheel drive version of this probably. And then we're going to go with a sequential or do we want to dual I mean, it's a homologation. So I don't know if dual clutch is allowed in any sort of racing uh, that this might fit into, but we're going to go with it anyway. And it's going to be a six speed and then raise this top speed up a fair bit. Then we're going to have a geared LSD, radials, semi-slicks, and rather big. Vented discs, probably a two piston in the front, and then a vented disc, one piston in the rear. Oh. My god. What? Is this something that we can... Is this something we can do? Oh, please tell me. Oh, please. Please, oh, please tell me that's something I can manipulate in BeamNG. Oh, dear God, please. Then sports, it is going to be a two-seater because this is more legation, which means it is technically for the road and it's going to have a basic CD, something really lightweight. Then, ah, oh, yeah, we are going to have hydraulic power steering. It's going to have traction control and ABS. No, oh, you know what? This is probably a European car, so it is going to have electronic stability control. Ah, uh, yeah, all right, we will have that. No, we're going to have traction control and ABS. That's what I like. Give it, like... Make it the driver's obligation to be good at using the car that you've bought. And then, because it is a European car, it's going to be a fairly uh, decent safety system. Standard. Gas monotube and passive. Wow. That was really good right off the bat. Now, do we go with carbon fiber wheels? Probably not, because their price is phenomenal. So let's compare it to alloy wheels. The prices, look at that material cost difference. Jesus Christ. We are going to stick with alloy wheels for this street car version. Damn, bruh. So our top speed is good. Our wheels are good. Our brakes are... I mean, they could do with a bit of beginning. Yeah, there you go. Now, now it's uh, nice and big. Though this is all going to change because we're about to put downforce on it before we do much else. Okay, so here we have a front diffuser splitter foil, whatever you want to call it. Then we've got these two little things here. Now these are all wings, they're not actually uh, what they're meant to be. Then here at the back we have some extra ventilation because I wanted to. And then we've got this uh, rear gooseneck wing and a rear spoiler. Now the only two things that are actually downforce are these two things. So the front is going to have more available downforce, but we're not going to go completely overboard, I don't think, anyway. Actually, you know what? Screw it. No, we are going to go completely overboard. Why not? Hmm, do we want that to be like twitchy oversteer? Probably not. Let's bring that down just a smidge. I am happy with that curve right there so we're generating 164 and 700 on the rear do we want to go completely ballistic and go even more downforce are we happy with that we might uh go over here and remember to hit suspension race preset it says we're still bottoming out 
You know what, I'm happy with that curve. So currently, we are generating 152 kilos on the rear at top speed and 578 kilos in the rear. But we are going to be doing most of our racing. Say we want to do that uh, high speed corner at about here. So we need lots of traction. What is this curve looking like? It look, It's looking fairly good. Our top speed is reduced a fair decent amount, but 289 uh, basically 300 kilometers an hour. Not bad. So let's go ahead and continue the beautification process, which I kind of already started. Whoops. <laughs> And they still haven't fixed this whole rotating issue thingy. What happens if I click these buttons? Nothing ha- oh, okay, that switches between rotate, scale, and move. Does- oh, great. Now it's stuck on rotate. That's also- also there's some sort of glitching there? What was that? Well, at least we've got the Durbel- what was it? The Durbel GT Sport. So it is a Grand Touring type car, and it is a sports car. Though, I probably should call it more than the sports, because it is actually, uh, as a matter of fact, a, uh, a homologation race spec car. And I really kind of like it. It's got a really powerful but five-cylinder engine. Also, I've just noticed that the uh, brake pads are also slotted, not just vented. I've got some details also that I really like on this car. But uh, there's also a lot of details I don't like. Like, apparently the windows are three-dimensional. So there's like caps on the tops of the window that are made out of window and it's very- What is that? What are those dots? What, what is happening here? Am I playing, uh, what is it, Itch.io? Or whatever that game was? Agario. Agario. Yeah, is this Agario? Am I in the wrong game? I... I think this has turned out fairly well. We're about to see though whether I was able to get the handling quite- What the- What? I'm about to see whether the handling got right. Let's move over to uh, B-Man G, a game that's a little bit more polished but still quite unfinished. Damn. And here's the Durbel GT. With some minor quality issues, uh, it seems that the underpan keeps falling off. So yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I'm gonna bother going back to fix that. Though, wait, hold on. Oh, they fixed the invisible under tray thing. So I didn't even need that in the first place. Ah, fantastic. Well, that was an issue that they always had. I just assumed they were never going to bother with that, but now they've got it and it's all good. Okay, awesome. Now we're gonna try this around a racetrack. You know what, I forgot to put the steering wheel on, but we're gonna say that this is one of those uh, driverless race cars. Those things are so good, they never have issues, do they? Now we are going the reverse way around the track, but I just wanted to try experiencing this racetrack for the first time, and I don't think I've ever properly gone around this the reverse way without being distracted or anything like that. So this is... Still quite a new experience for me. And so far this car is handling it quite well. It has problems with mid-corner speed. It tends to get a little bit uh, tail-happy with uh, power coming on. But it's still got a decent amount of traction. Well, coming through that the reverse way is pretty uh, difficult. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey. That's uh, the point where it gets a little bit tricky. I wish there was a thing that I could bring up to show you, like... Uh, current tire traction so then you could actually see that through corners I'm fighting this thing quite a lot but it also handles quite well so here we're going up to a fast corner that's going to come into slow brakes not so great oh there we go good now we're good okay we got it I think that was just more under tree oh there we go <laughs> I think maybe I should control this thing manually because it seems to be when it changes gears this just it becomes uncontrollable Sounds great though, don't you think? Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, you've got a you got this traction kind of problem, but I think we're gonna switch over to manual now and give this thing a little bit of a Oh okay, it's just set to sport, so hopefully oh, oh every time it changes gear this thing just kicks hard out to the side. Where are we going now? I don't know this direction. Oh no! Okay, so this thing is not great under brakes. 
So that's a problem. Come on, come on, come on. Put that traction down. Yes, put the traction down. Put it down. There we go. Good. The traction is good. And without the ESC on, oh boy, without the traction control, sorry, it does become a little bit more beastly. But uh, it was also blipping there. I think I noticed when it was under brakes. So I think that was an issue. Oh, hey, would you look at that? A little bit of loss of traction there. Not exactly what we like to see. Oh, and it's gone. We have created a car which is at the end of what is capable for this guy. And you're about to see... Are we going to see it pop off? Pop off. No? Okay, so it's not going to pop off this time. You know, just because I said it would, and then it's like, ha ha ha, tricked you, it won't actually do it. So now the underside... Oh, there we go. There it came out. Well, shit. Who wants to go see this guy? <laughs> Who wants to see this guy around the automation test track? But, oh, you know what? First, no, we're going to take it down a drag strip and see what sort of time this race five cylinder nationally aspirated behemoth three point something or other liter car can do on that. Okay, let's give this bad boy a try. So we're going to go Q and then we're going to go into sports. I don't know if that makes really any difference. This thing is quite good in a straight line. We're not really getting any sort of waywardness. I gave it a little bit of a touch there just to see if it was moving or I was in control. Oh, an 11.1 straight off the bat from a five cylinder. You know what? That's very impressive. This is naturally aspirated. What was that other car? The, the ginormous big chungus. That thing did an, a, a 10 point, I think it was nine or an eight. That thing, that, that was impressive, but this, it's not, like, really light or anything. Let's give it one more try. This time, we're not going to move it side to side. We're just going to go completely straight. We're not going to touch the steering at all. It is fairly correcting, so that's quite good. It does want to go a little bit to the left, but we are good on 11.2. Again, nice. All right, let's see what this car actually weighs. The brakes are not great. I'm not going to lie. They could be a little bit better. Oopsie daisies. Well, that came out. It reckons we're one and a half tons. Okay, we got rid of those doodads. And now it reckons we weigh 1.8 tons. What? Oh my God. That is ridiculous. What? So it reckons five, 1,248. Yeah, about 1,800 kilos. Damn, son. This is a hefty boy. Jesus. It weighs the same amount as a freaking Bugatti Veyron. Okay, we're about to see what this thing can do on uh, a lap around the automation test track. A lot of jiggle from the rear end here for some reason. And then we slow down, get it turned in, come around here in the first corner. We've done okay. A little bit, it, it really does actually feel quite heavy, which is, I mean, I probably should have noticed these things. It really wants to get that rear end out. I think maybe having that lack of rear downforce on the rear was a mistake. I wanted the thing to like nicely turn in, but it doesn't nicely turn in. And then the rear comes out. So I just, I needed a lot more downforce all around. And well, let's retry that. Seriously, what's with me in hefty cars that don't want to break recently? So <laughs> something's not quite right here. This is not a homologate. Like this is fiberglass, like body paneling. It's meant to be super light and then it just kicks out. It just goes. I wonder if that's because it's changing gears or because the thing is, uh, uh, I can't even think of what the word it is that I want to use. Oh yeah, or because it's uh, getting a sudden kick of power, uh, kind of clutch dumping sort of thing. It, it's a little hard to tell when you're in the middle of racing and you're not really concentrating on what the car is itself. So I may go back into replays and see what that does and just experience this because this is not the a normal sort of like kick out that you get because it's in the highest speeds at top ranges what was my speed just then well, how fast was i just going oh do you get turned get turned get turned there we go made it around there heavier cars do not like that corner and it is kind of a make or break unfortunately and for me it was a little bit of a break as opposed to a make oh <laughs> That was heavy. I just pulled it up in time, but it was so hard under brakes that it uh, became really tricky to actually handle properly. And those brakes are getting a little bit toasty and warm. 
So you gotta watch out for that, I suppose. Is like a, if you were to race this thing a lot on the track, I get the feeling that there's gonna be some sort of things that you're going to be doing for, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, well, instead of like a, this half homologation, they make it even lighter by doing a whole bunch of different things. Oh, damn. I braked so late with such a heavy car that I was braking at the end of the corner. That was pretty bad. But a 216, that's, uh, you know, pretty tasty. I likey likey. Not, not bad. For being so heavy and not a particularly powerful engine, this thing did a pretty good job. What's the power to rate ratio on that? It was 500 and something... Uh, horsepower, so I think it was, uh, sorry, kilowatts, 7 to 4 by approximately 1.8, and we get 402, wait, oh, okay, so you know what, actually, that's not a bad power to rate ratio, that is actually surprising, my math in my head is saying that this is actually really bad, but it's not really bad, I've created, by accident, two really fat and heavy cars, like, really fat and heavy oh my god like the last one yes was deliberately meant to be really heavy this one was not and like look at that body roll this is set on race suspension and it still has a lot of body roll it's just because this car is so heavy i yeah maybe this is not the right body for race homologation i mean i looked at it and went you know what that looks a lot like uh when you're looking at it in automation uh, yeah, before you start doing anything to it. Looks a little bit like the Mercedes GT McLaren, whatever that, like a uh, one that they made as uh, a homage uh, in the last 10 years or whatever. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, because I did. This is a rather decent car. It's not uh, fantastic. You know what? Screw it. We're going to do another lap. So did you guys know that I think it's like 80 to 90% of you aren't subscribed? Now, I know that I'm begging for subs and I don't generally like to do it, but I thought I would chuck it in right here at the end. That, uh, do you think my quality of uh, content creation is of the quality of somebody that should have such a small subscriber number do you think i should have more if you think i should have more and you're not subscribed just let me know that you like my content by actually subscribing and hopefully then you won't even miss uh my content you'll be able to uh, find it fairly easily if you got the subscriber list you know exactly when they are meant to come out they're about uh 1 30 my local time in the morning uh which is just before the peak of my youtube audience watching my stuff and actually, you know what's surprising to me? Is I didn't realize how many people from the Middle East are actually uh, watching my video. Like a lot of my audience is from there. That is so surprising. I didn't know that. I just assumed that uh, everyone was from the USA. Uh, but when you look at this graph, you can see why I would be forgiven for making that assumption. But yeah. Uh, I, I really do appreciate every single one of you that come by my videos. I do appreciate the comments. So, I, like, I look at every comment that comes on my channel because currently I don't get that many. So, I'm not like a big massive YouTuber with thousands of comments. And I'll be like, I'm not reading all of that. So, whilst my comments are a small amount, uh, feel free to chuck in also challenges. It makes it easier for me to create content if you're the ones telling me what to do. Then I don't have to think about it much. Uh, though I do like to create my own cars sometimes, and sometimes it will take me a while to get around to get into your thing because I've got a few videos already lined up in my head and I want to do it before I lose, like, uh, passion to do them. But uh, I think whilst not paying attention to this lap at all, I've done actually a rather decent lap. What was my last lap? I think it was 2.16. I just knocked off two seconds without paying attention. Maybe I should not pay attention when I drive. Ha ha ha. Ah, nope, 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 come to a stop. But yeah, anyway, that, that's my spiel. There's also a Patreon if anybody wants to. I hope you like, uh, Mini Chungus here. The, uh, Durble GT Sport. Which, now that I know how heavy this is, I do not mind it be called a sport and not actually, like, race. Or RS, or something like that. Because it is so big. Wow, this racetrack? 
feels so different in reverse. Maybe I'll do like a reverse race series one day. That'd be really fun. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you next time in the next video. Bye.